Retro console modding has never been more popular and nowhere is that more obvious than with Sega hardware, particularly the Dreamcast. While ODEs and flash carts like GDMU, Fenrir and the EverDrive Pro tend to steal the spotlight, one of the most debated mods over the years has been the humble power supply. For a time, replacing the Dreamcast PSU almost became a trend, pushed hard by YouTubers, and in most cases the reality is this. The original Sega PSU is actually very good. In fact, many replacement solutions introduced new problems. External power bricks, extra clutter, and in some cases added noise to the video signal. Now cards on the table, I fell into this trap myself. My own Dreamcast ran on Coaster 2K's Dream Power 2 board, not to be confused with the far cheaper Dream PSUs that you find on AliExpress. Now there is genuinely valid reasons to replace or modify your Dreamcast PSU, and that's when you install a GDMU. Without a load on a 12 volt rail, the stock PSU can run dangerously hot, and excess heat is the last thing that any aging console needs. Solutions do exist, such as removing the 12 volt regulator, but that approach can introduce its own complications, including RGB SCART issues depending on your cabling. In short, even the safe solutions can turn into time consuming rabbit holes, time that could be spent actually playing the Dreamcast. So when I heard about Thundertronic's Thunder PSU for Dreamcast or Thunder Dream, it immediately caught my attention. Thunder Dream is a high-end replacement PSU that retains the original design philosophy, eliminates heat concerns and avoids the compromises of smaller external solutions. And that brings us nicely to how this board works, and whether it finally gets Dreamcast power right. So let's talk about what the Thunder Dream actually is, and more importantly, why it exists. At its core, this is a direct internal replacement for the original Dreamcast power supply. No external bricks, no soldering, you remove the old PSU, drop this in its place and you're done. One of the biggest advantages straight out of the gate is that the Thunder Dream uses a universal power input. That means it automatically handles any mains voltage anywhere in the world. No worrying about 110 volts, 240 volts, step down transformers or regional differences, it just works. Now this isn't a budget solution and it's not trying to be. Thundertronics haven't copied a generic design from a datasheet or knocked something together to hit a price point. This board was designed from the ground up using high quality components, with the goal of doing one thing properly, delivering clean, stable power inside the Dreamcast. And that leads us to what really matters, picture noise and heat. The Thunder Dream runs significantly cooler than both the stock PSU and most third party replacements. Less heat inside the console means less stress on aging components, and that's especially important if you're running a GDMU or other internal mods. Power noise is another big one, and this is where cheaper solutions often fall down. In simple terms, noisy power can lead to video interference, instability or long-term reliability issues. The Dreamcast sips power at 50 to 60 Hz intervals, which inflects this behaviour in the power circuit itself. This can cause noise, ripple, or instabilities in cheaper power supplies, but not this one. The Thunder Dream produces far cleaner power than the original Dreamcast PSU, with dramatically lower electronic ripple under real world conditions inside a real Dreamcast console. And you can actually see the difference here. What you're looking at on screen now are oscilloscope captures taken inside a running Dreamcast. The Thunder Dream trace shows a much tighter, more even signal. The voltage is being held steady. By comparison, the original Sega power supply shows a much larger repeating pattern. That stepped waveform lines up with how Dreamcast draws power and pulses, responding visibly to those 50 to 60 Hz power sips. This doesn't mean the original PSU is bad, it's behaving exactly as you'd expect from a late 90s design, but it does show that the Thunder Dream is far better at smoothing out those power demands in real world use. To put that into perspective, the original Dreamcast PSU produces several times more noise than this board does, and while that automatically doesn't mean problems, cleaner power is always a good thing, especially if you're using RGB SCART, VGA or a modern upscaler. It's also rated for more power than the original PSU, 30 watts to be exact, which is 8 watts more than the original power supply. 
This gives you extra headroom for mods without pushing the system harder than it needs to be. In short, it's under less strain, runs cooler and stays more stable. Safety is another area where this board stands out. The Thunder Dream uses a medically rated power supply, which is about as high a standard as you can reasonably expect in consumer electronics. That means better isolation, better protection and peace of mind, especially for a console that might be left powered on for hours at a time. This version you're looking at here is revision 2 of the design, and the changes aren't about performance leaps, they're about refinement. Higher quality polymer capacitors instead of electrolytic ones, improved board layout for noise reduction, a stronger input connector that mirrors the original Sega design, and a four layer PCB to further clean up power delivery. And if you're wondering whether you need to upgrade from Rev 1 to Rev 2, the short answer is no. This isn't a fix, it's simply a more mature, more refined version of an already solid design. Thunder Dream's aim is to power the Dreamcast properly, safely and without compromise. The real question of course is whether it delivers on those promises once it's installed. Let's find out. Just to be completely clear before we move on, Thundertronics did not sponsor this video. They didn't send this unit out for free and they've had no input into this review. The Thunder Dream was purchased with our own money and everything you're seeing here reflects our own experience with the board. So first off, the Thunder Dream board doesn't just look premium, it feels premium. It has real weight to it, something tangible in the hand that immediately makes it feel worth the asking price. And once you start looking closely, the precision in the engineering becomes obvious, the design is incredibly clean. As mentioned earlier, I've been using Coaster 2K's Dream Power 2 for almost 4 years now, along with a laptop style external power brick that comes with it. And it's no secret that using cheaper or lower quality power bricks with third party PSU solutions can introduce interference, especially if, like me, you're running your Dreamcast through VGA. In my case, that interference appeared as fine, snowflake-like speckles, most noticeable on bright or white backgrounds. The moment the console powered on, you could see it on the boot screen. With the Thunder Dream, that interference is completely gone, it's non-existent. But it's not just that. As mentioned earlier in the video, the Thunder Dream delivers a far more stable flow of power through the system, which means that any noise in the image is gone. The signal is so clean, it's genuinely impressive. And to be clear, I'm not talking about signal quality from the Dreamcast into the OSSC via VGA and then out into OBS through the Elgato capture card. I'm talking about the source signal itself. Everything is just rock solid, it's stable and clear. And it really does underline something important. You can have the best cables and the best scaler in the world, but if you're feeding your console with subpar power, it will always show somewhere in the chain. Another claim that caught my eye came from Hossam Mograbi, the designer of the Thunder Dream, who stated on the Thundertronics YouTube channel that the board emits no heat. None. Now I'll be honest, I was sceptical. Excess heat is something that many Dreamcast owners battle with, especially once you start adding mods like GDMU, but he was serious. The Thunder Dream emits no heat. I tested it over two nights, around three hours the day it arrived and another four hours the following night. That's not to say that I was actively playing the whole time, I left multiple games running in attract mode, swapping them at regular intervals, but the fact is, the system was powered on continually. At the end of each session, I checked the Dreamcast's notorious hotspot, inside the lid, bottom left corner. Nothing. It was cool to the touch, and I mean not even mildly warm. Now that is really impressive. And while it might seem like a small thing, I also appreciate that Thunder Dream sticks with the original Dreamcast power socket. It respects Sega's original design philosophy, rather than forcing you into an external brick or a new cable setup. Now I know there's plenty of people out there who are perfectly happy using the Dream PSU with an external power brick, and at £68.66 delivered, using current exchange rates, the Thunder Dream certainly isn't the cheapest PSU replacement available, but it is the highest quality one. If you want a custom PSU that does away with the external power brick, runs cold with zero heat, delivers exceptionally clean power, has headroom for future mods and is built to last, then look no further than Thunder Dream. The other bit of good news is that Hossum is already working on a Saturn version and you know we'll be all over that once it comes out of prototype stage later this year. 
If you're in the US and you want to get your hands on a Thunder Dream now, Stone Age Gamer currently has stock for $99.99. If you're in the UK though, check out the Thundertronic store via the link in the description. As always, this has been James the Segaholic of the Sega Guys. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the Sega side.